Yo, what's up guys? This is Theo here. Welcome back to your third tutorial in the Introduction to C++ course here on Solo Learn. Everyone can code. So we're on basic concepts and we're just on printing a text. Let's go ahead and uh, work through this together. So using a single single uh, count statement to write output to the to the console or to the screen with as many instances of new line as your program requires will print out multiple lines of text. So uh, here, see what we have before, and we use this um, this escape character that forms a new line for us, and then at the end we'll just uh, return zero. So we're going to try that out. We're going to try out all of these things. So we'll say uh, we're going to do our new lines here. Let me see if I can get it new and new. I think I might have done it backwards. Awesome. So cool. Um, so that was it for that one, guys. Let's move on now uh, to comments. Okay, so comments are explanatory statements that you can include in the C++ code to explain what the code is doing. The compiler ignores everything that appears in the comment, so none of that information shows in the result. A comment begins with two slashes, okay, similar to, um, you know, JavaScript code, uh, or, or sorry, HTML code, maybe. Um, the slashes tell the compiler to ignore everything that, that follows until the end of the line. Okay, cool. Uh, when the above code is compiled, it will ignore the print hello world statement and it will produce the following result. Awesome. So which choice indicates a single line comment? That would be B. Awesome. Uh, Multi-line comments. Comments that require multiple lines begin with slash asterisk and end with asterisk slash. You could place them on the same line or insert one or more lines between them. Cool. Um, so let's go ahead and, and try that comment, asterisk and asterisk comment. Let's go ahead and run our solution. Cool. Using comments. Comments can be written anywhere and can be repeated any number of times throughout the code. Within a comment marked with um, multi-line comment, characters have no special meaning and vice versa. This allows you to nest one comment type within the other. Okay, cool. Um, adding, and then here, here's a little aside. Um, Adding comments to your code is a good practice. It facilitates a clear understanding of the code for you and for other engineers who read it. Uh, so which of the following is true? Uh, comments are used to confuse programmers? No. Single line comments start with a asterisk? No. And comments are ignored by the compiler? It would be C. Cool. Uh, so we'll do one more, guys. We'll do, we'll do variables. Okay, so creating a variable reserves a memory location or a space in memory for storing values. The compiler requires that you provide a data type because this is a strongly typed language for each variable you declare. Um, C++ offers a rich assortment of built-in as well as user-defined data types. Integer, a built-in type, represents a whole number value. Define integer using the keyword int. C++ requires that you specify the type in the identifier for each variable defined. An identifier is a name for a variable, function, class, module, or any other user-defined item. An identifier starts with a letter, A to Z, or lowercase, A to Z, or an underscore, followed by additional letters, underscores, and digits 0 to 9. For example, define a variable called my variable that can hold integer values as follows. So we give it the data type, we give it the name, and then we set it to um, this piece of data, 10. So what is the data type name for integers? That would be int. Cool. Um, variable. Now let's assign a value to the variable and print it. Okay, so we're gonna try this out here in a second. So all we're doing is we're assigning a variable and then we're writing it to the stream. So let's go back into our code. Um, let me open this back up again. So we'll go change directory into my desktop, cd hello world, c++, and we'll do uh, sublime. We can open this up. And let's just, inside of our main method, guys, let's create a variable called int my variable. We'll store this, to set this equal to 10, okay? And now, instead of printing this message to the stream or appending it to the stream, we'll append my variable to the stream. And uh, after we do that, uh, we can do G++ to compile, and then we do hello world, I'll make this a little bit bigger, G++ hello world dot cpp, so we can compile our code, and now we have our a.out file, which you can sort of see, it's pretty hard to understand, all ones and zeros pretty much. Um, 
So let's go ahead and try that out, guys. So the way we run this, if you remember, is slash and the name of the file, a dot out, and let's see what we get. So we got 10. Cool. So let's just try and see if we change it to 100. And let's compile again. And then let's run um, a dot out. We got 100. Cool, guys. Um, so, you know, be sure to try it out. It's all about muscle memory. The C++ programming language is case sensitive. So my variable and my variable are two different identifiers. Cool. So supp suppose you have a variable named my var. Type in the code to print its value. Okay. So we'll say count as we're printing it to the stream. Awesome. So variables. Define all variables with a name and data type using them in a program. In cases in which you have multiple variables of the same type, it's possible to define them in one declaration, separating them with commas, similar to JavaScript. So here we have two integers, a and b, and because we're not defining them, or because we're not setting them equal to a value, we're able to define them all on the same line. A variable can be assigned a value and can be used to perform operations. For example, we can create an additional variable called sum and add two variables together. So here we have a and we have b, um, and then we're creating a sum, which is a pointer to store the, the sum of these two. And now we can print that to the stream. Awesome. So what we can do to declare a variable sum equal to a plus b. So we have sum plus b. Awesome. Let's run that. Good to go. So variables. Let's create a program to calculate and print the sum of two integers. Okay, so let's try this out before looking too much at this code. So here we have um, int number one. And um, we're going to store this to 10. And we have int number 2, store that equal to 20. And then we're here we're going to have an int sum is equal to number 1 plus number 2. And let's print this to our stream. So we can print sum. Um, cool. So let's try this out. Let's compile our code. So let's say G. Um, oh, sorry. G. Hello world.cpp. Cool, it's compiling. And let's run it, a dot out. And what do we get? We got 30, cool. Let's try and change it one more time to 100. We should expect to get 110. So we'll do G++, um, hello world.cpp. And then we'll run a dot out. And we got 110, cool guys. So experiment with that yourself. Awesome, always keep in mind that all variables must be defined with a name and a data type before they can be used. Uh, so which two statements are true for variables in C++? Uh, variables are preprocessor directives. I don't think we learned about that yet. Variables must have a data type. Yes. Variables must be declared before their use. True. Variables do not have names. No, that is false. Awesome. So uh, that was it, guys, for part three of introduction to C++ programming here on sololearn.com. Everyone can code. Just uh, wrapping up the basic concepts. Still a little bit more to go. Uh, anyways, hope you guys are enjoying it. Give me some feedback. Make sure to like, comment, and please subscribe and support the channel. It means a lot. So thanks for watching, guys, and have a great day. Take care.